Okay, this sermon is entitled, Faith versus Saving Faith. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 122 reads, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Now, one of the more subtle tactics that the false prophet will use in perverting the gospel is to declare different types of faith. You have a normative faith or a generic faith, and then you have quote-unquote saving faith. And these false prophets have invented this false dichotomy, claiming there are different types of faith in order to discredit the faith of people they dislike. And of course, this is a Calvinistic tactic. And They typically do this to people that are living in sin, or perhaps their faith was ephemeral or passive, as opposed to the true believer's super-resilient Calvinistic faith. It's a load of garbage. And see, when it comes to false prophets, after they've exhausted their work salvation approaches to perverting the gospel, this multiple faith theory seems to be like a last resort or a last-ditch effort to try to deceive people, it's as if these stupid devils are just running out of time and they have to come up with something very quickly. The clock is ticking for them, in other words. Time is running out for the planet Earth. And when it comes to these stupid, unsaved, Calvinistic devils, these people are completely perturbed that others are saved, so they got to come up with something. So it's like, I got it, presto, you don't have saving faith. You have a false faith that doesn't save. Yet, according to them, they have the real deal. They have the real McCoy. And typically, these Calvinists will make categories of faith. For instance, they'll go into James chapter 2 and claim that, well, because the demons believe and they're not saved, you must have demonic faith. And they like to present all different types of faith. They have, like I said, demonic faith, head faith, heart faith, spurious faith, dead faith, superficial faith, temporary faith. They might as well just claim that there's a such thing as Mickey Mouse faith or Donald Duck faith. It's retarded. And basically, the the only reason these people are doing this is they want to claim that certain people have a non-saving faith, but they themselves, they have real faith. And we know it's real because they have works to accompany their faith. And all these people are doing is just polluting faith with additional non-saving objects. And see, the ironic thing about this is, is that those who are categorizing faith in this manner, they're the ones with a false faith because they have a false object. Calvinists have faith in themselves. It's not in Christ alone. Now let's just take a look at what the Bible says on this. Does the scripture talk about different types of faith? Turn over to Mark chapter 11. It reads in verse 22, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Now notice that Jesus does not say have a certain type of faith in God. He doesn't say have heart faith in God or have real faith in God or have saving faith in God. He just says have faith in God. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Once again, faith is not categorized or specified. Now turn over to Luke chapter 7. We see another example of this. It reads in verse 50. Let's back it up to verse 49. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is it that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. So there aren't different types of faith. Faith is simply faith, and the definition of faith is this, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith is to be persuaded that something is true. And the reason why there aren't different types of faith, like these stupid, unsaved Calvinists are teaching, is because faith is not the issue. It's not faith that saves a person, it's grace that saves. Faith is simply the channel that enables us to receive God's grace. 
The important issue is the object of one's faith, and that needs to be the gospel. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again. He did this to secure us salvation by giving us everlasting life that can never be lost. It doesn't matter how much faith you have. It doesn't matter the type of faith. What matters is is that you put your faith alone in Christ alone. You can't share your faith with something else. There's no such thing as bifurcation faith. When you're trusting in Christ and something else concomitantly, it has to be in Christ exclusively for salvation, and that's the issue. If you really want to get down to the brass tacks of the matter, one either believes on Jesus Christ or they don't. So there's no such thing as a faith versus saving faith dichotomy. There's just faith in Christ, and then there's faith in self. And those who think that there are multiple types of faith, who try to discredit the faith of others, thinking that their faith is superior, they don't have faith in Christ alone. And neither do the people who are trying to distinguish between head and heart faith. They're too busy trying to figure this all out, and... They're not resting in what Jesus Christ has done for them for salvation. So when it comes to faith, you either believe on Jesus Christ or you don't. John 3.36 makes that clear. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So it's not a question of what is saving faith. It's a question of who does the saving, and that's Jesus Christ and You either have your faith in him alone, or you don't. These stupid Calvinists who teach all this garbage, they obviously don't. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 